Okay, and Deputy Cullinan had indicated you want to come in and. Kermogar's Coherlock, and thank you for that. Um, I'll put my questions to Mr. Mannion. If it's um, because uh, ask your question and then the deputy and then we'll, we, we can see yeah okay um, well I would just prefer if I could put them to Mr Mannion because you have already yeah. said that it might be somewhat difficult for you to answer some of the questions yourself um, my first is in relation to policy wise you might be able to answer this yourself first Mr O'Fullu um, policy in relation to intellectual property uh, the research funding agencies, which could be European Union funding, it could be Enterprise Ireland, Science Foundation Ireland, and so on. So, and, any of these agencies that publicly fund uh, publicly funded research uh, systems all require that the higher education institutes own the intellectual property, but that they can be commercialised. And there's rules then around how they are commercialised. So, can you very quickly talk us through what those rules are? In the first instance, what national guidelines uh, are in place and second of all is it the case that each of the higher education institutes will also have their own policies and procedures in place as well yeah the national ip protocol uh, sets out that commercialization may benefit higher education institutions and provide incentives to the researchers involved in creating ip so it, it, the ip may include uh, protectable ip and know-how and they can make provision for higher education institutions to have a system for sharing of income from commercialising within the organisation, including with the relevant researchers. So it is international practice that researchers may hold shares in, in spin-out companies. And so the, the, the national protocol makes it clear that higher education institutions should have policies and procedures in place that, that minimise or manage potential or actual conflicts of interest. So, so they have to work within the yeah, overall and I, and I accept that that's an international practice, and I can accept that there's a logic to that because you want to encourage innovation and research and so on. Um, but what you're saying is that there's a, a national guideline, which is the national protocol, and then each of the institutes would have their own guidelines. Who, would, in, who in these, those institutes would, in the first instance, draw up the guidelines, and in the second instance have management roles and, and governance and oversight roles? Well, that, that would be within the, the governance and accountability under the governing body and, and the president as accountable person. And then in terms of the chain of command, so it would be the governing body, the president, and then well, if you were to go further down, would, for example, a dean of research or a head of research have a role? It would depend on the arrangements that each institution put, put in place. But and isn't it, that part of the problem in here as well, where we have different policies and procedures in different institutes and I did some research on this where I can see very big variances in guidelines in, the, in terms of their robustness between institutes. Well, I'm, I'm not sure that there is a problem, but I'm happy to explore whether there's a problem. Um, what we're seeking to do here is to put in place arrangements really for, for commercialisation of research and we're seeking to be as supportive as possible of commercialisation of research and the spin-outs and the, the employment that it arises from that. So it's a balance between the various elements, but the, the, the principal aim here is to enhance the possibilities for that. So yes, there, I there, have, I have, and I, I know you're, you're not disputing that. Yeah. So the, 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 I can I just say, yeah. first of all, Mr Ophelou, that I am not for one second alleging any wrongdoing by anybody. But what I am concerned about is processes, policies and procedures. So I've heard what you've said and I, I get the issue in relation to encouraging researchers to uh, start up companies and uh, and commercialise, if you like, some of the work that's done. But is there any distinction drawn between researchers who have no input whatsoever into governance, management and oversight, and researchers who would have a role in governance, management and oversight? Do you see, first of all, that there would be an important distinction to be made? For example, would you see the role of head of research in an institute to be a very demanding role in, in and of itself? Well, it would, it would depend on the nature of how somebody undertook the head of research role. Of course, it's a demanding role and it's a senior role. But I think all, the, the issue about, about codes of conduct for employees and conflict of interest is, is the key thing here, which is a matter for governing bodies to oversee if there's a conflict of interest between being in the chain of responsibilities for research funding and being having 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 a potential interest in the company i think that's what, what i'm saying to you is i'm very putting a very distinct question to you 
do you personally see a difference between a researcher who has no role or responsibility in relation to management, oversight or governance in an institute and somebody who does, taking up, for example, either a directorship role or a shareholding role in these uh, companies which are co-located in, in public institutes? Do you see the point I'm making here? That there's, I, I is, do, do, Would you draw a distinction? No, not necessarily. And, and why not? Because the person may have an involvement in the company. You couldn't, I don't think we should be excluding people who are heads of research from an involvement in establishing companies. That would, in, and would those head of, if it was a head of research, would that person have a role in relation to how grants are spent, research grants, oversight I think, roles in I that think, area? I think that there would have to be, you wouldn't want to take somebody out of the innovation space just because they were in a management position. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying you need to have make sure you had there were arrangements in place. But I don't think just because somebody's in a management position they should be removed from the innovation space. Okay, I can move to Mr. Mannion um, at this point. Um, you're familiar with a company called Feed Henry, Mr. Mannion? Um, yeah, I know of it, yeah. Yeah, and uh, do you know how much that company was sold for? No, I don't have the exact figure that it was sold for. 64 million euro. Do you know how much Waterford Institute of Technology got? I know they had a percentage that they Do you know how much they got? No, I don't know the exact figure. I can tell you, it's, and the, maybe the controller might be able to confirm this, it's in their 2013 accounts. They got 1.3 million euro of that 64 million. Uh, would that, in your view, be uh, a significant return for the Institute, given that it was a company that was co-located in the Institute? Well, uh, first of all, uh, it would depend on the, the arrangements that were made at the time, but um, there was a, uh, and I understand there is a process And who would make the arrangements? I understand there is a process in place in all institutes to actually deal with, with this uh, uh, particular issue of spin-out companies. Who would make the arrangement? So in terms of the well, shareholder? The arrangement would be between the, 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 the company and the, the, the institution itself who would want someone to negotiate on their behalf. I don't know exactly who negotiates on behalf of individual so institutions. The institute was a very minor shareholder here. Uh, in terms of but when, a, when there is a set out, in advance of any of these issues coming up, the, the, the percentages are set, are set out as, as to what. And I understand, what I'm trying to understand in this process. So in this instance, and that's one example, um, it was sold for very significant money. The institute got a tiny fraction of that. This is an institute which uh, we are told is in deficit. Um, it's also one where its core funding has been cut quite substantially since 2008. So. In terms of public accountability and people then who have been senior positions in an institute who might have either a role in being a director or shareholding, um, surely we, we would have uh, a right to know did they benefit personally from this, how much they benefited from, how would we find that out or would that be information that would be in the public domain? Well, I don't know if it's, it's in the public domain, but I'm sure it's information that, that could be found out. Is it information you could get for us? So could, could the department, for example, furnish this committee with a breakdown of exactly who got what? People well, who are, and I'm talking about people now who are employed by the state, people who work for the institute. Um, and notwithstanding the rights and wrongs, and, and I'm not saying it's wrong that they would have any association with any of the companies, but if the institute got 1.3 million, I think it would be interesting to see those researchers who are shareholders, what they got, how much they got. <clears throat> company's registration office or company's office might do like I don't know is it a function of any employer to get into their private financial details of their employees I'm just making that point now you know just because... but with respect this is yeah. a bit different because okay. this is a company that's co-located in a research and development agency with yeah. respect so there's a bit of I don't want to labor too much on that yeah. company yeah. are you familiar with a company called Asino mobile services ACENO, Mr. Manny. Uh, no, I'm not. You're not. Would you be surprised to know that this company is basically a shelf company for TSSG, IMS Stream, Feed, was Feed Henry, uh, TSSG Holdings, Zimbi, Zold C Holdings, Fusami. So it's a spider web of different innovation companies. And that the shareholders in most of these companies are the same people who are also employed by the Institute. Would that be an issue of concern for you? Well, obviously, I, I don't know the, the, the legal background to, to, to any, any of these companies, and therefore I, I can't make that comment. But you asked about the, the Waterford share in, in the, 
in the spin out. And what I'm saying is that we can find out the processes that were, that were involved in negotiation of that figure. And you said and earlier can, there was a, can, a, a, an internal see review. If, if that's in keeping with the protocols that are set out in relation to this matter, and, and you said fair, earlier it there was, from other ones. You said earlier there was an internal review. Um, in, in there is Waterford. an internal review being carried out at the moment. So who's carrying that out? When you say internal, is that internal to Waterford? Yeah, to the Institute, yeah. Institute. And who then would have responsibility for overseeing that review? I imagine that it was the governing authority who... who uh, uh, and would the president have a role? No, I think the chairperson would be the person who would have would role. Would the president have any role? I don't think the president has any role in this particular... Uh, so there's an internal review in an institute, and the president would have no role whatsoever in the internal review? Well, I think in view, in view of the, the nature of the review, I think it's quite appropriate that the President doesn't have a, a role in this particular And would it be more appropriate if the President had a shareholding in, in these companies? Would it be more appropriate then that he would not have a, a, a role in, in terms of the review? I think it's appropriate the President doesn't have a role in it when actually uh, some of the issues that are, of, uh, are under consideration are, uh, are related to... Um, a role he may have played in it previously. And would you be satisfied with an internal review? We'll have to see what that internal review brings up. Obviously, um, we, we, if the re review concludes that there has been issues raised that, that are, are, are not appropriate, obviously we wouldn't be happy with it and we'd have to see further with it at that stage. You see, and it's just a final point I'll make on this, and I would just put this to yourself as well as Coherlock of the, the <coughs> PAC. I allege no wrongdoing whatsoever, and I have no difficulty whatsoever with encouraging researchers to have a role in setting up companies and spin-out companies and so on. Uh, the information I've been given is that uh, the president of the institute has a role in terms of the president is a shareholder in many of these companies. So surely, and I put this to Mr O'Fallou as well, surely there has to be an arm's length distance between a person who is president of an institute. Because you said earlier you had no difficulty with someone who is a head of research. I disagree fundamentally with you on that. Um, but certainly the role of president is entirely different. And I put it to you that that's something that needs to be examined. Uh, there is an internal review. I'm not quite sure an internal review is the best way to deal with this, but that's the process that's in place, so we'll see what comes out of it. But would you understand the concerns which have been expressed to me? And I have a duty and responsibility then to put those questions to you again, not alleging any wrongdoing whatsoever, but in terms of governance and good practice and best practice, that if we have a president of an institute that is also a director and a shareholder in a spider web of companies uh, that are also co-located in the institute, that benefit from research grants, that benefit from researchers who are working for the institute, <coughs> that that arm's length relationship may not be what it is, or what it should be. Would you have any concerns at all in relation to that? Can I ask, yeah. answer that, this question in yeah. principle rather than rather than about the institute in question? Yeah. It would all depend on a number of factors, such as when the person took the interest in the first place. And in this particular one, we're not aware that there's a cause for concern. The institute came to us, told us what they were doing. This is the first step that they're taking. When they come to us, we will look at it. So we may have a concern, but there's no reason for us to have a concern yet. But they wished to check that. They put a process in place and they're coming back to us when they've done. They informed us they were doing that and they'll inform us of the outcome. At this stage, I'm going to call Deputy Connolly, finally.